chapter, verse number 10, and it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. The lesson text, it comes from the same chapter, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not go to prayer because he was little of passion. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the, to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Today, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. When, he, when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with the man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto that Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. Jesus said unto him, This day salvation comes to this house, for as much as he, he also is a son of Abraham altogether. But the Son of Man is come to see and to say that which was born. Our minds begin to reel with thoughts of 
Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord, son. Praise the Lord. I'd like to wish everyone a very good morning. Amen. I'd like to give God to John, who is heaven my life. I'd like to give God to Bishop Morrison for allowing me this opportunity to teach this Sunday school lesson. Amen. And I would like to welcome all our visitors for the first time to our Sunday school class. Amen. Amen. And uh, so, once again, I ask that y'all pray for me, that the Lord will help me. Amen. And that it help gap my mind and gap my thinking. Amen. That I may be able to be effective in teaching this lesson. Amen. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> today we are starting a new series. Uh, we're starting the second series of our spring Sunday school semester. And uh, our spring Sunday school semester, this uh, second series, uh, first lesson in this second series is called Portraits of Salvation. Now, uh, <clears throat> uh, the series will give us uh, give us uh, give us a uh, a snapshot of the way that the scriptures determine or the scriptures portray salvation, amen, or deliverance. Now, how many? Now, some of us don't know, but some of us might might do know that the way the world determines or what you call the secular. Churches determine uh, salvation, and the way the scripture depicts salvation can be two separate things. Correct. Amen. Correct. Amen. Sometimes the way the uh, the uh, world will determine salvation or portray salvation, salvation is you know uh, something that one already has. Amen. Amen. Because. In our society that we're living in, is that our society has became a very narcissistic society. Yeah. Yeah. In that nobody wants to be wrong. Yeah. Everybody has a way of justifying the wrong that they do. And how the Bible portrays salvation. In order for someone to be saved, they must first recognize the concept that they are lost. Yeah. So when Jesus started portraying salvation, he began to talk about or portray lost things. Amen. How people are or have joy when they find something lost, or how uh, what is what is the hopelessness of when you have something that is lost. Amen. Uh, how many of y'all know that? How many of y'all like being lost? You know, going on a vacation or going on a trip. We have, people have made uh, millions of dollars, now billions of dollars, on the concept of keeping from being lost. How many of y'all know that's true? Yeah. yeah. You know, but we got these things called cell phones. Yeah. And they got, what do they call them? GPS. Yeah. Because nobody likes to be lost. That's right. Now, back in the day that when people used to have to have math or, 
or even nowadays, one of the hardest things for people to accept is to accept the fact that they're lost. Yeah. Some people, you know, they're going on vacation and they are lost. Instead of slowing down and asking for directions, they would speed up going in the wrong direction. Yeah. That's true. And therefore, that is human nature or how we respond to be to, 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 to the concept of lostness. Because nobody wants to feel powerless. When you lost, you're powerless. Yeah. When you're lost, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 have, you have no control. You have lost control over the situation. Yeah. And nobody wants to feel out of control. They've done, done a behavior science experiment with babies. And they found out that babies get happier when they have the power to change what they're looking at. They put a little wrist thing on babies and the baby waved his hand and it changed the picture. Oh. You know what I'm saying? They found out that when they put these little things for the baby to change the picture what he's looking at, the baby responds and he's happier. Oh. Because our human nature is, is we like to be in control. Amen. 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 And when someone is lost, they have lost also their sense of control. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. So how the world? So and so because our how our society is, and how our society has become, is that everybody wants to placate to the flesh. Everybody wants to placate to the your sense of you're already naturally good. You know what I'm saying? But the truth is, how Christ came and what Christ came to look, he came, he came to seek and to save, not those that had it all together. Good. Not those that, that, that felt like they did. He came to seek and to save those that were lost. Those that recognized that they have lost control. Again, amen? amen? And this is the portrait of salvation that the Bible will portray that you that, like that song, you know, when, they, when we sing that song, take me to the water, and you have a second verse that says, none but the righteous shall see God. Well, the truth is, who is the righteous? And in, in, in the portrait of salvation, the biblical portrait <coughs> Portrayal of salvation, the righteous is those that has recognized that they have lost control. It is those that has recognized that they are no longer, they no longer have control over their lives and the situation. Amen. They have recognized that they are lost. Amen. Amen. So in our Sunday school lesson, Jesus begins to Talk about, you know, they begin to criticize the Lord because when the Lord came, uh, I think it's a uh, turn, uh, Isaiah 60, 60, uh, six first chapter. I think that's the six first chapter, the first verse. You got the minister? I think that's, I think that's right. The spirit, yeah. the spirit. Now, when Christ came, of uh, his first, what you call introduction of his ministry, he stood up in the synagogue and he read from this book of, of, of Isaiah, and this was a prophecy about what the Messiah, what what is the behavior, or what the Messiah was going to do when he shows up. Amen. See, Amen. see. See, one thing, the Lord ain't bashful about nothing. He let everybody know who he was and what he was going to do. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead, brother. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to who? The meek. The meek. Go ahead. He has sent me to bind up the broken heart. He came to preach good news to those that was meek. He came also to bind up who? The broken heart. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. To the to, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And open the opening of the prison to them that are bound. 
and I opened it up from prison to those that are down. So when he came and he began to spend time with these folk that the world had cast aside. How many of y'all know that 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 that, that, that folk would cast you aside? Yeah. How many of y'all know that, that that this world has a tendency to devalue those that are in distress? Yeah. Can I get an amen? Amen. How many of y'all know we live in a world that, that devalues, that seems to have a problem that they look down upon when they see things that are weak? Yeah, amen. So when Christ came and he began to actually seek out the those that was weak and lost, they said, what kind of, what kind of Messiah is this? Why is he spending time with these folk that in our society that we consider undesirables? Folk that don't want to be around nobody. You know what I'm saying? Folk that, that, that they say, oh, girl, here she comes. You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to invite you over to their house. Because they're afraid that they, when, when you're there at their house, they're just staring at you because they're afraid of what they're going to take. All right. Are you amen? All right. Good. See, these are the people that Jesus was coming for and ministering to. Because you know what these people knew? These people knew they was jacked up. Yeah. These people knew they had issues. Yes. See, the woman with the issue of blood, <laughs> she sought Jesus because she knew she had an issue. Yep. But see, now folk that seem to got it all going together, they don't want to seek out the, the, the portion of salvation, the, 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 how the Bible puts salvation, they don't really seek after the Lord. Right. Amen? Amen. And the world has seen to put a value. Put, now, let me tell you something. The Lord, he doesn't value. His value system is different than the world value system. 100%. Okay. The world will value what you got. Mm -hmm. I get an amen? amen. The world will value your part, like what, you, what you call your 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 your, your name. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Your product, who you came from, what your family, who yes. who your daddy is, yes. your pedigree. Thank you, Sister Rose. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. But see, God, the Lord, He values. The soul. That's right. He values those things that you cannot see. Uh, now, I like how, how Paul put it. He said that for the things that we see are temporary. But those things that we cannot see, those things are eternal. Amen. See, the world we live, we live in a, what you call a materialistic world. Yes, we do. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But the truth be known that materialism is all an illusion. Right. It is all an illusion. And it is those things that are unseen. It's those things that last forever. Amen. See, everything that you can see, touch, and feel, it's all breaking down. Come on. Even this universe is breaking down. Yes. It's true. Entropy. Entropy. Thank you, Brother Sean. Yes. That things are getting all that. That's why I tell people to say, well, we. We're, we're evolving. No. no. Nothing is getting better. No. Everything is breaking down. Yes. Melvin Rose, I, I can't run as fast as I used to. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 And say, well, you know, as we, I tell people that before Christ, if man ain't saved, only thing he get is he get old. He don't get better. Right. You know what I'm saying? People think that because you get old. No, if you ain't saved, if you don't have Christ, you just get old. You don't get better. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen? So nothing without everything that you see is passing away. That's right. Amen. That's what the Bible You know what I'm saying? But you see Christ, he sees value in things beyond what the world values. Can I get an amen? Amen. Now, in the first story, or the first, um, Parable, he talked about a man that lost, uh, a shepherd that lost his sheep. Yeah. Now, the sheep, he had a hundred sheep. And he looked around and he counted his sheep and he found out that one was lost. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he left the 99 to seek after the one. 
Now, according to the world value system, they got this thing called collateral damage. Yeah. You know what that's called? What they call acceptable losses. Managing your risk. In other words, when you go out to invest something, you got to expect to lose something. Yeah. So always manage your risk and focus on what you have instead of what you want. That's right. But God's value system is different. Yes, it is. That you just are not nobody. Nobody. Is what you call acceptable loss. Right. And this gospel that we preach, this salvation that we see, there is no collateral. Right. Can I get an amen? amen? The Lord will, let me tell you something. If it was just one soul out of all creation, can I get an amen that, that the Lord had to die for, he would have left his mighty home in glory. Yeah. Came down 42 generations. Took the despised and beaten of the cross just for one soul. Right. How many of y'all know that this is true? Uh, that the Lord just didn't do it for the masses. Uh, but the Lord does it for you. Uh, the Lord knew it for you. Uh, he just didn't die. He died for everybody. Uh, but he died just for me. Yes, he did. Uh, hallelujah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you never will lose your value. That's 
right. So the Lord, he saw, now, the shepherd, when he sought after the sheep in the wilderness. Yes. See, let me tell you something. For him to go after that sheep was a dangerous journey yes. for the shepherd. It was wild animals out there. Yes. Can you amen? amen? It was dangerous things out there. But the shepherd left what was sacred to him to go out into the wild wilderness to seek after that one yeah. lost sheep. The Lord will cross out the dangerous things for you. And when he found that sheep, he'll pick the sheep up and he'll put it on his shoulder. And he brought the sheep back to the other 99. And he was joy. Yeah, there was joy over that one sheep. Amen. 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 So I, I gotta move on in the Sunday school lesson. Amen. It says that he will seek for those who are lost. Yes, the Lord is looking for folk that's lost. Amen. I love that. Yes. Can I get amen? Yes. You know, that's why, you know. In this way that we preach, this holiness that we preach, you got to humble shepherd their up and be glad. Yeah. Yeah. It's those that recognize that the problem ain't mama, problem ain't daddy, the problem's me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. See that, that that that's that's the righteousness. Oh, See them are the righteous folk because none of our righteousness is just filthy rags. And here's the trap door. That once you acknowledge your shortcomings in righteousness and unrighteousness, the Lord will, put, will change your clothes yes. and clothe you in yes. His righteousness. Yes. Yes. See, that's what the Bible says. That's what I'm thinking. Take me to the water. Yes. Take me to the water to be baptized. <laughs> when they say none but the righteous shall see God. Right. What they're talking about is them that have acknowledged Come on now. their shortcomings. Yeah. Them Amen. that have acknowledged that, that the problem is me. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Isaiah 35, the 35th chapter, I think it's the fourth verse. Somebody please get that for me. I think that's right. Isaiah 35. 35 and 8. 35 and 8. And a highway. There we go. Shall be there. And a highway shall be there. And a way. And a way. And it shall be called. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The, of holiness. the unclean shall not enter. The unclean shall not enter. But it shall be for those. There shall be for those, the way, I like that, the wayfaring man. Now, the wayfaring man is him that's traveling by foot. Yeah. Now, if you travel by foot, how many of y'all know if you travel, you travel on foot, you got to travel light? Yes, yes. Can I get an amen? amen? So if you travel on foot, you can't take a whole bunch of mess with you on this one. That's right. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? This one we're talking about. You got to give it up. You got to lay it down. All that stuff, all, all those past issues, all it's going to do is weigh you down on this journey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you got to give it up. You got to put it all behind. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Amen. See, this way of salvation that we preach, we tell you, sister, leave all that behind. Leave it all. Yeah. Amen. Because all it's going to do is weigh you down. Brother, leave all those past mistakes and those past things and those Oh, what you call nicknames. Leave them behind too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm no longer Melly Mel, I'm Brother Rose. Yeah. I'm no longer Whip Man, I'm Brother Rose. Yeah. You got to leave even those old nicknames behind. Yeah. You got to leave all them old, you got to leave some of them old relatives behind. Preach. Well. Amen. Because all 
they going to do, sister. All they going to do, brother, is wake it down. Yes. Right. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. So then, in our study, later on now, I think I'm coming. Yeah, so. Now, <clears throat> he said he's seeking to save yeah. those which was lost. It says, when the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to pray, Jesus responded by saying, after this manner, therefore pray, ye, our Father, which art in heaven, holy or hallowed be thy name. Yes. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Yes. Thy will be done. Yes. You see, when we pray in this way, when we pray, ultimately what we're praying for is for the will of God. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, some people say, well, what they call it, the black and rap. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, let me tell you, all I want, how many of y'all, when you come to the Lord, the Lord's been so good to you, he got you out of your mess, he don't have nothing else for you. Mm -hmm. Can I get an amen? amen. When, he, when the Lord rescues you out your mess, a lot of times, only thing you can start using, you, you can Concerned about is doing his will. Yeah. Amen. So when, you, when we pray, ultimately what we want is for God's will to be done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, some folks say praying for, you know, I want a man to no. know. You want God's will to be done yes. in your life. Yeah. And one of the will, what's the will of God? The will of God said he don't want anybody to perish. He said that's the will of God. Anybody to perish. But then all, amen, will come to repentance. So what, 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 we, what we want, what we pray for, is that when we just say what we're doing, we're we, we looking for those that's lost too. Come on now, yes. We're trying to do God's will. That's why the young brother brought you to church, because he was trying to do God's will. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's why you bring your kids to church. Because I'm trying to be God's will, because it ain't the will of God that anybody be lost. Amen. My kids, he don't want my kids to be lost. Mm. He don't want your nephews to be lost. He don't want your nieces to be yes. lost. Yes. So go to so, so one of your kids, go tell your friend. Yes. Yes. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Now, when uh now when it says Jesus, after he taught this, he demonstrated it. Yeah. Now, when he was on his ministry, on his way, Jesus was going. He said, now, I got to go through Jericho. Now, if you read the Bible, when he was to Jericho, the only thing he did is really did in Jericho was saw one person, Zacchaeus. It seemed like he went all the way to Jericho just for one person, just for Zacchaeus. That's something, ain't it? And then when he was in Jericho, you know what I'm saying? All these people, every place where he went, it was a crowd of people. You know what I'm saying? And Zacchaeus was a short dude. And Zacchaeus was saying he wanted to see the Lord. Yes, he wanted to see him. You know what I'm saying? But he got all these people around. Yeah. And see, that's what I tell folks is, you know, come, people say, I don't want to go to church because, you know, they got them, they got some hypocrites there, and they got this, they, let me tell you something. There's always been a crowd around Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was always those that were seeking Arterial motive, but guess what? Yeah. Those people that actually got what they wanted for Jesus, they have to get to the point that they have to push through the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah, don't worry about what folks you're going to find when you come. Just come. Yeah. Jesus is going to be there. Amen. Yeah, if you let crowd of folks, Jesus is still going to be there. Yeah. Amen. 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 So Zachariah, he went through and he couldn't find his way through the crowd. So what he did, was he climbed up into a sycamore tree. Yeah. yeah. Now, with the sycamore tree, and what it actually represented was 
him doing everything within his power to see the Lord. Yes. You know what I'm saying? See, when you want to see the Lord, you got to do everything in your power first to see the Lord. He showed that was an act of repentance that, that, that Zacchaeus was willing to go through the extreme to see Jesus. He was putting forth an effort. So then what I like about the story is Jesus walked around, walked straight up to the sycamore tree, and looked up and called Zacchaeus by his name. Yes, he did. Now, with this that you start, uh, Psalms 147. I think this Lord's up on me. Psalms 147. Psalms, everybody get that scripture. I think it's Psalm 147 and 4. He counts the number of the stars. He counts the number of the stars. He gives names to all of them. And, and, and he calls them all by their name. By their name. Yeah. If the Lord know every name of the stars, surely he know your name too. Yes. 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 And what he did was he called Zacchaeus by his name. Yes. In other words, the Lord knows where you at. The Lord doesn't does even know where you're at. He knows your name. And when the Lord called Zacchaeus by name, the Lord was saying, Zacchaeus, salvation has come to you this day. Yeah. And what did he do? He came on down out of his sycamore tree. Yep. He came on down out of the efforts that he was using to see God. And he just obeyed the voice of the Lord. I'm going to tell you this morning, you got to come down out your sycamore tree. You got to give it up. You got to come down off those things that you thought that was going to help you. You got to give up those things that you thought that was going to help you. And you thought that was going to keep it. Right. I'm going to tell you that salvation is here today. today. Yes. And the Lord is calling you by your name. Yes, he is. And I'm going to tell you, come down out the sycamore tree. Yeah. Come down out of those sycamore trees. Amen, amen. Yes. Amen. amen. And the Lord called Zacchaeus by name. Now, here's the deal about Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector. Yes, he was. Now, who likes paying taxes? Raise your hand. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody likes to pay taxes. But see how they collected taxes back in the Roman days? Is the Romans was an oppressive government. Yeah. You know? In other words, you know, you pay your tax dollars. You can call the fire department and they come put at your house out for free. But in the old days, they paid your taxes, you didn't have the fire department. Right. Rome was an oppressive government. And not only was he collecting taxes, what the tax collector would do, the tax collector would say, we'll go to the Roman authorities, come out of his mouth, out of pocket, and I'll pay for Joe's taxes. The Allen boys taxes and sister Shay's taxes. And then I walk away and I come to them and tell them, y'all gotta pay me now for those taxes. Mm -hmm. And instead of being then what I would do is, is I would tack on extra. If your tax was hundred dollars, I'll pay the hundred dollars, and I come to you and sister Shay to tell you you gotta pay me two hundred dollars. That's what tax that's what that's what that's what he was doing. Yeah. That's why the guy do. Who would who, who be popular like that? Nobody. Nobody like that guy. Right. That's what Zacchaeus was doing. Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And he had gotten extremely rich of everybody else's misery. Mm -hmm. yes. I.e., what you would call in our society a drug dealer. Yeah. He's getting rich off of society's misery. And nobody liked this guy. But guess who came and talked, called him by name? Yeah. Yes. Jesus did. Yes. Come on. And what he was letting them know 
was that if you actually make an effort to the Lord, the Lord will make an effort towards you. Yeah. So you may not be there is the truth, you know. Right. Is this. Okay, none of our efforts, okay, none of what we do actually change our situation. Amen. Yeah. But sometimes our actions depict our heart. Yes. Can I get an amen? Yeah. You know, when we tell folk, come down to the altar, what we're telling them is take an action. Let God know you're serious. Yes, come on, preacher. Can I get an amen? Come on. And, all, and then you let God know, he will move towards you. Yes. Can I get an amen? Yes. Because how many y'all know that he's looking at the heart? Yes, yes. Amen? Amen. And when he sees a heart, he said, he said, a broken and a contrite heart, he won't despise. Right. Yes. And don't nobody know your heart but the Lord. Yes. That's why I tell people, can't nobody give you the Holy Ghost but the Lord. Amen. Because the Lord is the only one that knows your heart. Amen. Amen. Uh, take it to the end of my time. I hope I did all right. Yes. Amen. And I turn the remainder of the service into the hands of the bishop for remarks and correction. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, Praise God. Praise God. Yes, we are valuable. The truth is valuable. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, preacher. In order for a person to get saved, they have to recognize the truth. Yeah. We have a court system in our society mm -hmm. and that searches for the truth. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And when you find the truth, mm -hmm. it requires action. Good, Bishop. Amen. Amen. God ain't gonna make nobody get saved. Mm. Amen. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. That's true. Amen. Faith come by what? Hearing. And then God wants you to do what? Respond. Yeah. Respond. Yeah. Yep. But what you're responding to, of course you may feel good. Mm -hmm. But you're not responding to the feel good. Right. All right. You responded to the truth. Right. All right. All right. Amen. That's the key to getting saved is responding to the truth. Yeah. Because the truth will set you free. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, brother. Good bless.